Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mojita. I'm here interviewing on behalf of Urban Asian. I'm so excited because our guest today is a woman of so much talent. She's an entrepreneur, a, a published author, and she's debuting on Bravo TV's Family Karma season three. Hi, Avni. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. And namaste to all of our Indian viewers. Oh, that's very sweet. We're so excited that you're sitting down with us um, for this brief conversation. Um, I do have a couple of questions lined up for you, but of course, you already know I'm going to start with your debut on Family Karma. So how did that happen? Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how did you get casted? And then what was the decision uh, process like to be a part of a reality TV show? That's such a great question. Um, <clears throat> Because my involvement in Family Karma actually goes back to season one. And when the cast was coming together at that time, um, it wasn't the right time for me in that moment. And I was also, you know, I had a full-time job and it was just very difficult to kind of maneuver around, you know, filming for this uh, docu-series. Um, and so let's just say when Family Karma began filming, I want to say it was like 2017-ish, perhaps 2018. Um, and then it took about a couple of years for it to hit televisions and everybody loved it. You know, I think Family Karma just brings an incredible insight into Indian culture that most people don't get to see. Um, and especially if you're not friends with like, you know, an Indian family, um, you don't get to, I think, delve further into our traditions, our rich culture. And then what's also unique about Family Karma is, you know, the, the mixing of East meets West, and so, you know, the, the, our group, which are, I would mm -hmm. say, millennials, <laughs> and um, it brings an interesting dynamic with their families. So for me, I was there in the background, and finally, it came time for filming season three. And I think things just kind of worked out organically. I was already attending Rich and Vishal's wedding and it just happened, it just really happened that way, honestly. There was, it, it wasn't like, hey, we're going to bring you on, um, you know, and this is like your firm set role or anything like that. You know, like I mentioned, Family Karma is a docuseries, so there is no scripting. <laughs> Everything's very real. Wow, that was actually one of my questions for you. But then I was like, are we allowed to ask this? <laughs> um, that's insane. So just no script at all. It's completely organic. And then I guess they edit and slice as needed for the storyline. Essentially, you know, I can't really speak to the editing processes. But yes, um, you know, you've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of filming time compressed into an hour. So yes, you know, editing kind of like uh, works its magic, um, but mm -hmm. no scripting. Everything that happens is really what happens in real life. That's insane. Is it really hard for you to um, have to suddenly get used to having so many cameras around and like knowing that you're always mic'd in? <laughs> for me, um, I'm like, I guess it was easy because I forget that the cameras are there. So, um, you know, in the beginning, the first, you know, the first time I was mic'd up, naturally I was a little nervous. You just don't really know what's gonna happen or what's to come. But after that, it just was like very easy. It felt so natural. I forgot that the cameras were around. I forgot that I was mic'd. So I am, um, you know, I'm also watching with popcorn and champagne and <laughs> just kind of seeing what unfolds. Yeah. You know, I actually, is the second, second episode out already? 
yes. for season three? It is, right? Okay. I haven't seen that one yet, I'll admit, but I did see the first episode and there was already a little bit of tension between you and Brian's mom. Um, so she made a comment during her confessional part where she was saying that she was a little bit concerned because you're older than Brian. And I was curious to see what your thoughts are, right? Because we have that type of taboo that still exists today. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I think um, first off, uh, Brian is a 30 year old man and now I am 38 years old. So I'm a, we're both grown adults. And I think at that point in time when you have two consenting adults who can make their own decisions, um, I think that situation in and of itself is fine. Um, with Brian's mom, I actually had no idea that she wasn't uh, too keen on the idea. Um, however, with that being said, I do think she has you know, valid concerns. And the truth is, um, you know, eight years is a, in my opinion, a substantial difference. Uh, women tend to mature quicker than men. Um, and plus, I think that Brian's also in the prime of his life, and he should really be able to uh, live it up. Yeah, I mean, of course, I agree with you. So I guess there's no like confrontational moment between you and Dharma auntie <laughs> this season. <laughs> Can you answer that? Not to my face, like everything was totally a-okay. So again, you know, it's very, very funny for me to see back just because, you know, I, I take things very lightheartedly. I tend to think I have a better sense of humor than most people. And so, you know, uh, ultimately, Brian's family is amazing. His mother is radiant. She's beautiful. She's smart. Uh, his father is just such a great guy. His brother's amazing. His uncle Terry, I love. We also share a birthday, November 7. Oh so, you know, he comes from a great family. Yeah, no, I've, I've met them a couple of times too, and I have to agree. They're so chill. And even like the dad, like Mike, he's so sweet. Um, I think I met his uncle too. And they look like twins, first of all, <laughs> like the dad and the uncle. I was like, wait, what? This is all, this is three different people here. Um, but no, they're awesome. But it was really, it was just, it caught me off guard because I feel like usually Dharma auntie doesn't have a lot of drama in the first two seasons. She kind of just was like there. Brian's usually doing his thing. And then for the first season, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Um, but I'm really excited to kind of see how this is going to play out. Um, I didn't, you know, we're still watching the seasons. Of course, we don't really know how this is going to unravel. But, you know, from all the buzz online, it looks like the season is just packed with a lot of juicy, juicy material. So I cannot wait. Um, I'm actually, that's what I'm doing after this interview. I'm going to go and catch up on <laughs> the second episode. So that'll be great. But now I want to switch over a little bit and I want to talk to you um, about your book. Um, so you authored a self-help book and it's called Be a Bigger Person. So can you tell us a little bit more about what this is and um, what your goal was when you published? Absolutely. So here's a copy of it. <laughs> you just happened to have it right next to you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, this is actually somewhat of a, a tool for me that I use to refer to. And that's exactly why I wrote the book. So the idea for Be the Bigger Person came to me as an epiphany in 2014. And, you know, like most people, we all go through ups and downs in life. And I was in a moment where I was going through a down and I was talking to a friend saying, I'm just so sick of being the bigger person. And uh, this friend of mine said, well, why don't you turn it into a business? And you know, the light went on because I've always been a writer. I've always uh, delved into the creative as a way to express myself. And for me, putting aside a business, it was, more important to create a tool uh, to help people rise above the negativity that they encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And the thing is, is that this happens across the board every day, whether we realize it or not, we're dealing with a lot of negative things. Even if it's somebody cutting you off in traffic, you know, say for instance, you got cut off in traffic, a little later in the day, you get demoted. Or for instance, say you work for Twitter, <laughs> you get cut off in traffic, drive to work, then all of a sudden you get to work and then you find out you're fired. I mean, this is already a really, really, really bad day. For me, I would be like mm -hmm. in the dumps. And, you know, those are the times and situations where we need uplifting the most in our life. And so I found for me that every time I was dealing with something, I'm like calling up like, you know, my, my right hand and nobody's available. You know, people have lives, you know, no one's there to like stop their life to help. And, you know, as much as we all probably do have a support system, you cannot, or I personally do not expect people to drop what they're doing to help me mm -hmm. overcome perhaps a negative situation that might be perceived as very minute. But what happens is, is that all of these very small, minute problems and situations we encounter, if not dealt with, get compounded. So you compound, 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 and then people explode, which is really the place and time we're at right now. So the epiphany, which came to me in 2014, I wrote the book in 30 days and the publishing. Wow. Order, yeah, you know, I was driven. I was driven. I knew exactly how where to go. How many pages is this book? Pardon? How many pages is this book? <laughs> uh oh, can you not hear me anymore? Let's see. Okay, ask me one more time. <laughs> can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> um, how many pages is your book? Oh, how long so, is it? Well, the book is. Um, it's chopped up into 10 chapters. Overall, there are 115 pages. It's very, very quick. And the idea is that you go to the table of contents, flip to the chapter that is most prevalent in your life. So say for instance, right now you're dealing with like a relationship issue, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, so you're going to go to chapter three in romance and you're going to look through the uh, the situations and scenarios that are um, outlined here. Then you go to the page and then you take a quick snippet. It's a positive takeaway and it's also a very realistic takeaway. That's also one of the things about my personality is um, I'll tell it like it is. Um, for me, it's also very important to think about where someone is on their journey. Um, so I'm not about to like, you know, stomp you down in the dirt when I tell you something, but I can tell you from my experience what I've found. And hopefully those who are wise learn from others when they teach them. Otherwise, then you have to learn by experience and that's no fun, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 10 chapters in 30 days that's insane you were definitely driven but I love the concept I love that it's kind of like a pick your journey type of um book I think those are the best because I am not a reader <laughs> I won't lie but I do love having um you know like books or any type of like even like digital content that has like sections like segmented out for me because I'm like just get to the point I need to know I'm here for a reason so I love that I love that that's like a, a, your format for the book um I know that there was a quote that I read on the website for your book um and it was I'm gonna actually quote you and it says it was about spreading a message and a life concept that can ultimately better humanity so I loved that. I think that is so beautiful. Um, obviously that is something that re is reflected in your book. And I was curious, is that motto something that we can kind of see um, unravel in your storyline within Family Karma? My God, that is a great question. I'd like to think so. Um, you know, 
being an author of a self-help book and teaching people about being the bigger person uh, carries a very, very heavy weight. And for me, um, it's very, very important that I do put my best foot forward uh, to be a role model for the younger generation. Um, you know, because the younger generation, they're our future. And uh, right now we're in, you know, crazy times. So, you know, I think any bit of positivity that I can put out, I will. And you will continue to see that from me actually um, in the next few weeks. I will be <laughs> so I'm telling you, but I'm gonna be uh, releasing a, it's a supplemental workbook for Be The Bigger Person. Ooh, okay. And um, this, this actually, it works in tandem, but it takes you now a little bit, uh, a little bit further on your journey because now it's all about the journey of self-discovery. Because with the book, what you're doing is you're dealing with, ideally, you're dealing with the, the issues that are plaguing you in the moment and that have plagued you in the past. Uh, in here, you still will get situations that you will encounter in the future. So a lot of thought, research, and analysis was put into, you know, compile all the situations and scenarios. Um, but yeah, it's all about raising the vibration and I've, I'd like to say I've done that throughout our filming process. That's amazing. I, I was gonna ask you what was next, but you answered my question before I even asked. I cannot wait for the supplemental thing to come out. Is there a release date or is that still kind of under the wraps right now? Still under wraps, but it's gonna be very soon. I actually will circle back with you and let you know firsthand, so. That would be amazing. That's awesome. Do you use um, Family Karma, the platform that it comes with to market your book? You know, um, <clears throat> I actually have no idea whether or not the show will uh, share that aspect of what I do. Um, so truly I have, I really have no idea. Um, and with that being said, <laughs> that's my cat in my lap. With that being said, um, <laughs> you know, it would be wonderful uh, and it would warm my heart if viewers could identify with the book. Uh, truth is like, you know, if you are subscribed to Amazon Kindle, you can check out the book for free. So for me, writing the book, especially this book in particular, was not about money. It was more about sharing a message that I think is needed now more than ever be the bigger person let's all rise above negativity and you know with bravo shows we all know there's a little bit of drama here and there so <laughs> <laughs> drama can't it's not always a bad thing though i will say sometimes you know a lot of people tune into bravo because they're like all right i had a long day now i want to hear someone else's drama <laughs> relax and you're very right. Bad for that person. <laughs> I'm one of those people too. <laughs> you know, it's like a guilty pleasure. It's horrible, right? But <laughs> you know, it's also a good learning lesson. They're uh, they're teaching mechanisms, you know. And one of the things that I'm also finding is that viewers are very, very keen. They're very apt. Uh, a lot of the points that I see them sharing on Twitter um, resonate with me. You know, whether it's negative or positive in my favor, you know, I think people are still making valid points. And I do always encourage a discussion, a healthy discussion, you know? Yeah, no, that's a really good perspective too. And I actually, the next couple of questions I wanted to ask you are a little bit more about you and not so much about family karma or um, the book. And one of my first questions is really just like, how are you dealing with the fame, right? Because I'm sure the moment season one debuted, um, so sorry, season three debuted, you were probably flooded with messages, emails, I'm sure like Instagram DMs. Um, how are you dealing with it all? 
Uh, you know, it is definitely a little bit overwhelming when you have an like inundated inboxes everywhere. But uh, I feel so grateful and thankful that everybody's reaching out. And as everybody knows, whether I know you or not, I am getting back to everybody, responding. Um, you know, because for me, it's all about connections. We're all human. We're all here doing something in life. I think that we all have something co to contribute in this world. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully being on the show, people get to see a little bit more about me because I am very private and always have been. So this is definitely something that's out of my comfort zone. But, you know, I'm welcoming it with open arms. That's awesome. Have you had that like celebrity moment yet? Like, have you been recognized anywhere? I've had some looks and stares, but you know, it's really interesting. I've always dealt with looks and stares. So now I'm just kind of like, what? Like, I've always wondered, do I have something on my face or, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> never know. Um, so it's this funny point, yeah i'm just kind of like chooping on it hasn't been anything too crazy uh but let's see as the season progresses because i know there's going to be a lot of funny moments and uh people are going to be curious i'm sure i remember um listening to an interview um by anisha i think after the first season premiered and she was like someone recognized her at like Starbucks or something or like a grocery store or something like that. I can't remember the specifics, but she was like, they recognized my voice <laughs> in the open. And that's how they were like, wait, were you on Family Karma or something? And she was like, my voice, <laughs> which I thought was so funny, but I'm sure that's like a surreal moment. Um, whenever it does happen, I'm sure it will happen. Um, you're 37 now. Um, am, I, am I correct on that? 38. <laughs> 38. Okay. Well, close enough. Um, mm -hmm. And you're unmarried. So I wanted to ask you, um, how has that, or has that even been a factor in, in um, your relationship and how you interact with other South Asians? Um, I ask because I know that that's, it's kind of like a big conversation for so South Asian women in general, um, the older you get you're not married people tend to have so many opinions and so many like so much advice to share um probably unsolicited so <laughs> what is your take on it what's your experience on it and is this even something that you deal with uh, so being 38 single indian uh is a very very interesting you know combination um and Okay, so on the family front, I don't really ever get pressured. So that's a positive for me. But again, you know, my family knows me and I'm a, a very firm person. So if I say, you know, it is X, Y, Z, they're definitely not gonna like push any further. But beyond that, for me, I've always known that I would find somebody uh, who was right for me. Um, but I think everything in the past, as far as dating, has been a learning lesson to bring me to this point where I am so sure and firm in knowing what I want in a, a partner and also what I bring to the table. So really looking for an equal partnership. Um, and then with the Indian community, what I think is interesting is Yes, as you do get older, there is a stigma um, that, uh, I mean, what is the stigma? <laughs> She's a little too old. Uh, the issues are also, you know, having children and things like that. And, you know, these are all valid concerns, of course, for any woman uh, as she gets older. And then family and friends who do care about her if, those are things that she wants in life. So for me, I would love to have uh, children. Um, I am more of the traditional mindset. So I would love to meet my soulmate, get married and have children. Um, because the truth is, 
I mean, I could have had kids a long time ago. And I could have been married ages ago if I really was um, wanting to get married or say for some people might think she's just holding out for someone rich, like, please, this is Miami. Like, everyone's a millionaire. Who said that? <laughs> You're just holding out for someone rich. Okay. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> no, but, you know, so I make my own money. I don't rely on a man for that. Yeah. Uh, really, I'm looking for a connection. And that's the thing. It's hard to find a soulmate connection, you know. Um, but there you have it. Uh, I'm open um, to the possibilities of, you know, meeting a really nice, uh, humble, compassionate, educated man who's also on my level. <laughs> Are we talking about Brian? <laughs> you well, totally don't have to answer that. <laughs> Brian and I's story unfold. Um, there is a definite attraction, so I'm not going to lie to you. Brian's a very attractive man. He's so charismatic and fun to be with that I think any woman, I mean, if you're not attracted to him, you will be after you, you know, after you spend some time with him. <laughs> he's just, he's so sweet. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess you can call me a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Like you said, finding a soulmate, someone that you connect with, especially in today's world is really, really, really difficult. I mean, I have a lot of friends who are single who are in the dating uh, field right now. And the stories I hear from them are just, they're not like, they're just crazy in the sense that it's like, how are people so disconnected? <laughs> um, but it's definitely hard. I don't personally think that age has a lot to do with it. But of course, um, that is just my opinion. Um, <laughs> I'm sure everyone has their own. Well, thank you so much. We are pretty much at the end of the interview. But before we end, um, is there anything that you would like to tell the audience? Um, any closing remarks? Um, I just want to say, hey, guys, you know, follow along. Season three is going to be so amazing. You know, we saw Rich and Vishal's wedding. You guys are also going to see Amrit and Nicholas's wedding and everything in between. It is, it's juicy. It's, it's amazing. And then, of course, I'm a part of it. So you're going to get a lot of funnies. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't wait. And thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us at Urban Asian. We are so happy that we got this opportunity. And I can't wait to see your story unravel. Thank you so much. It's going to be incredible. Great. Let me stop recording.